Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Pat and today I'm bringing you guys my top books of 2020. Now when I was compiling this list, I actually had to go back and kind of make sure that these are all 2020 books, which I'm pretty sure they were, but I was just- I, it felt like they happened in a separate year. So yeah, that was very weird to me. I don't know, maybe it's because I have really bad memory. So I'm just like, did I really read that this year? Anyway, we're here now. Um, I have 13 books to share with you. Um, most of these books I rated 5 stars. There's, I think there's only one that I rated like 4.5 and 4.75 stars. But without further ado, let's get started. I think the list that I have is from the books that I read, the first books that I read first and then to the latest. So let's get started. All right, so the first book that I have is the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a historical fiction uh, about World War II set in France in 1939. We are following two sisters, Vivienne and Isabel, um, and it is during the occupation of France. And we are following their stories as they fight their own wars or fight against the war in their own way. One is more quiet like, but persistent, the other is more aggressive and loud but they're still both fighting against the war and for their loved ones and for themselves for their lives in their own ways this was very emotional i cried a lot reading this literally like snot running down my face face getting bloated and red and swollen <laughs> but we are following this the relationship between the sisters as, as it changes throughout their lives and throughout the things that their experiences their, their experience and the way they you know react to how the other person adjusts to how the world or how their world is changing and overall i really enjoyed this story it was very brutal and very emotional and it just shows you how much people have gone through during the wars and we don't have wars anymore but there's still a lot of people suffering it shows you the struggles of these people in their own way and how you can struggle is different from how another person struggles and just because you have different experiences and different reactions doesn't mean that the other person is struggling more or less than you are your struggles are as important and as painful as the other person so i really enjoy this i cried a lot i feel like this is a very essential book that we ha all have to read at some point in our lives i know right now it's really hard to recommend books that are very emotional but i feel like it's needed it's a way to ground us to, as well in that yes we are suffering but that's not all there is and we have to find the good in what's happening to us right now because we can't really change it we just have to work through it and be present in it and not avoid it face it and you know learn from it so Again, Kristen Hanna, The Nightingale. This is the book that I was like, wait, did I read this this year or was it last year? But I'm pretty sure I read it this year. All right, so the next one is Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Laurie Gottlieb. This one, I think, was very popular two years ago at this point, um, the year before, 2020. Uh, and a lot of people were talking about this. And this is essentially, we are following, this is on fiction, we are following the author, a therapist who goes to therapy after a life-changing personal crisis that she goes through and we see her change and learn more about herself and you know just go through her problems alongside the stories of her own clients and I honestly actually enjoyed the client's stories more than her personal story I feel a little bad about because this is her you know, story, you get this her own fiction book, but I just felt like I saw more changes and it's just a lot more laid out, the changes and the process of changing through the stories of her clients rather than her own. So I really still enjoy this. This really showed me that no matter how good you think you are, like in a good place you think you are, having therapy is as essential as it is going to like the doctor annually or semi-annually for a checkup. So I feel like it kind of re- so I, it strengthened that belief in me that we all need mental health checkups alongside our physical checkups annually, semi-annually that we do. So maybe you should talk to someone Bill or got leave. All right, next one is Where Do I in Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This was going around 2020, 2019 as well. 
and I really love this one. We are following um, Alex, who is the first son of the first female president of the US, and Prince Henry, who is kind of like Prince Harry-ish, and we are following them after, as they go through a fake best friendship thing after a picture of them having a confrontation during one of like the, uh, I think, engagement ceremonies of one of the important characters in the stories as well. So they form a fake friendship and they learn about each other and fall in love. And it was very cute. It was so heartwarming as well because we kind of see how much people hide, like prominent people hide um, from cameras and from the public and how much they have to change and be certain ways so that they have, they uphold this image that they have. So it's very educational but on top of that it's just very cute and such a really good story of friendship to lovers so cute all right the next one i have the female of the species by mindy mcginnis this has been on my tbr for two three years now um by the point that i read this i've heard so much about this i've heard a lot of people really like this and i thought this was going to be like you know a contemporary coming of age story and it was but it's a lot darker than that we are following Alex Craft, who is the obviously the main protagonist, and her sister, her older sister, was killed three years ago, and the murderer actually got away scot free, and we follow her as she as she forms friendships during her senior year, and we see her spiral down, and we see how much the experience has affected her as well as how the people around her reacted and how that has affected her and how much she's changed because of that and how isolated she's been to other people and that also obviously affected her and it's very emotional we see alex's inner thoughts um throughout the book and we see just how much she how how dark her thoughts are yet i felt so sympath empathetic towards her because i can see how those thoughts come to me from her experiences and you know just her thought process throughout her experiences this is very dark i would say that there are a few trigger warnings of this like sexual assault murder and harm self-harm i think so yes we this is a very important read for me personally it might not be a very you know important read for other people but i feel like the darkness in here is very realistic and that people experience all kinds of things all kinds of adversaries and they react in different ways and obviously you know people react in maladjusted ways as well so you can see that here but also see that they are struggling and they're going through these kinds of things and they're pretty much alone there's nobody there to help them and it also shows you just how much personal connection like human connection can change a person so Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Alright, the next one is... This is another non-fiction book. This is Intuitive Eating by Evelyn Trevoli and Elise Resch. I have the recently released one. This was published July 2020. And then I also have a workbook. The first one that I actually read was, I think, the 2013 version. I think the version before this. And this was very life-changing. I cried quite a bit reading first book because I learned about a lot of the things that I have developed throughout the years in terms of my diet and my relationship with food that that is rooted in how I was thought growing up when it comes to food and eating but also like a diet culture around my country um, if you didn't know I moved here from the Philippines I want to say two years ago now and in the Philippines there are very different beauty standards as it is here in the US. In the Philippines, it's very much emphasized having lighter skin and also obviously the weight that you have to be thin, you have to be tall, you need to have thin, tall nose. More like Western features compared to like the normal Filipino features that we have, which is tan skin and not tall nose. So anyway, I learned so much about like the cultural aspect of food and relationship and how that can change you as well as the, di the culture you have in terms of you know body image and stuff but also the personal stuff that your parents will teach you about food i've gotten a lot of guilt towards eating food i'm used to finishing the food that i have on my plate whether i'm full or not like i'm not listening to my body because i've been taught that i need to finish everything that's on my plate because it's wasteful if i don't so that's how i grew up and for me 
that's that's how it always been so it was very hard it's still i'm still working on it it's very hard to get out of that but also you know growing up i also gained a lot of weight during my puberty and so i was you know getting comments from people from my relatives about you know my weight and how much i've gained weight and you know what food i eat and how much food i eat and it just makes you self-conscious and it doesn't help when you're a 12 year old girl and you're learning about life and you're learning about relationship with other people and yourself when you get comments about that and so it was very eye-opening emotional journey and i'm still working on it so it's something that i need to work on i feel like it's something that i need to work on with another person as well because i feel like there's still a lot of things that are ingrained in me that i don't realize that i'm doing that is not very healthy so i feel like everybody needs to read this whether you have you think you have a healthy relationship relationship with food or not um, i think it's it gives you a different perspective in how other people view food and view fitness and health and how that affects the mental health as well so intuitive eating this one I actually haven't finished yet I'm about halfway through but uh the difference between this and the first book is that this has more like studies behind it because when the first book came out there weren't a lot of studies about it and then when that came out it changed a lot in the diet industry and so a lot of people started doing like um studies about it and intuitive eating and stuff and so they include that here as well their findings and there's also a workbook as well so this just is more of if you really want to practice intuitive eating so you have like stuff that you can there's like graphs and checklists and reflection um parts I've gone through the entire book lightly and I was going through it about halfway through as well um, earlier this year kind of stopped but I think I'm doing a lot better but I feel like this is something that I have to continue reading and rereading and relearning because it's hard to just you know get rid of something that has been ingrained in you since you were a kid so do it eating another book that I definitely highly recommend for you guys for everybody to read next one okay so the next book is another non-fiction book this is and it is so you want to talk about race by iljoma oluo it's very educational and what i really like about this book is that it the author really talks about her topics in depth based on her personal experiences and experiences that her friends have and she talks about um these topics very in a very detailed way and how you know a certain say thought or action is racist and how we can work through that like specific ways that we can um we can be more proactive and more informed against racism but also it opens doors to other ways that you can and she's also laying out specific solutions for the problems and how that solution can help you but also because she's laying out you know how this solution is effective or why this solution is effective it also opens doors to other ways that you can be more proactive against racism so i really like this book would highly recommend it's very short i actually listened to this in audio form so i highly recommend that as well i think the author was the one narrating the book if not still the narration was very good and so i really enjoyed listening to this so highly recommend this book as well the next one is loveless by alice osman this was going around booktube for a bit but the one person that really made me read this is Gabby Reads and I have a few tabs on here and we are following the main character Georgia who has never been in love, never kissed anyone, never had a crush but as a fanfic obsessed romantic, she's sure she'll find her person one day and then she goes to university and she realizes that um, her view of love and her relationship with love and relationships in general is very different from or it might be different from other people and she learns about you know asexuality and aromanticism and it makes her more uncertain and more confused than ever because she's someone who loves love but has a hard time finding it herself so i highly relate to her i am how old am i i'm 24 <laughs> yeah i'm 24 i'm 20, 25 this year and i've never dated anybody i never had a boyfriend i've never been kissed I've had any of that. I've had crushes before, but I've never actually been in a relationship. So I definitely related to her in that aspe aspect, and that it's a lot harder to find love than other people. I feel like other people have been in relationships and, or have been close to relationship, but I haven't. And feels, and I'm someone who is a hopeless romantic as well, but has never have been in a romantic relationship. So I highly related to her in that way, and her journey through finding all these different terms for different um, 
kinds of love is also very eye-opening to me and I loved her friendships here honestly and really that's the main thing that I really loved about this my personal um, kind of similarity to her but also the friendship that she has and that she goes through and the friends that she discovers etc and you know her process of learning more about herself and her identity I really loved so I really enjoyed this it's it's a coming of age story but it's definitely modern because it definitely talks about sexuality yeah i really enjoyed this it was very personal and highly uh it was very important for me personally i saw this by alex osman okay the next one is ninth house by Libra dugo i know that this has been going around booktube bookstagram uh, book blogs for a while now and i know there are mixed reviews about this one but i really really enjoyed this one this we are following Alex Stern, who gets scouted by Yale as one of the monitors for their secret societies. So this is dark academia, but it also has magic and occult. And obviously with dark academia, there's murder and mystery. And we are following Alex as she learns more about this world and goes through her own personal journey as well as she learns about this world and the hidden world from everybody else she is not a very likable character i will definitely say that that's why a lot of people are, are uh that's what a lot of people don't like that she's not a very likable character i get it but the thing is she's gone through so much that i in a way i understand and am empathetic to her and what and you know how she acts and personality so i actually really like her character so i'm definitely looking forward to reading the next book because one of the main like mysteries or one of the other mysteries here in this book we're, i feel like we're gonna get more on the second book or the next book i don't know when the next book's coming out i didn't know this was a series when i first started it but i really enjoyed reading this one i it does have a lot of trigger warnings there's a lot of sexual assault, um, drug use, drug abuse, murder, obviously, and gore as well. And there's a very disturbing scene in this book that I know a lot of people have talked about. But yeah, so I will put all the trigger warnings on below that I will that I can find from for this book. So if you're very sensitive to certain topics, be careful going into this or maybe don't go into this. But I really enjoyed this one. I had fun. I flew through this book. I read this in like two days and I had work and I just I couldn't stop reading it because it was so fun to read and it was very compelling to read as well. So I was really pretty good. Alright, next one we have Suggested Reading by Dave Connors. I don't remember where I heard about this, but I know I heard about it and I heard that it was a about a high school senior that is very much into books so it piqued my interest i bought it and you can see i have tabs and right from the get-go right from the first page i can definitely tell that i really like the main character because i relate to her love for books in here the way that she fangirls and the way she talks about the writing and the characters and the author as well it's very similar to a lot of people here in booktube because it just it's love for books and yes love for books so i feel like a lot of people relate to this as book lover so i really enjoyed this one so we're following the character the main character what's her name clara evans as she starts her senior year and discovers a list of prohibited media from her new principal that includes a lot of the books that she loved growing up and for her it didn't make sense and so she starts an underground library the unlive and she starts you know handing out these prohibited media to her classmates and it's very strict you know once the administrators or the teachers find you with the book that's you know on the prohibited media list they will put you in detention pretty much there's it's pretty harsh there's pretty harsh um uh consequences to that action so here we're following her as she starts this on live and she learns more about her classmates and learn more about the personal circles but also she becomes one or one of the books that she has in her on live becomes it gets connected to a tragedy for one of her classmates and she starts questioning her own love for books and her relationship with books and you know why these prohibited medias are being prohibited because she's very much she's going into you know, like the whole online thing with a very single-minded focus but as she starts questioning her 
love for books and why she loves these certain books and how other people can be affected by these books in a different way compared to her was very eye-opening because as much as we love books there are other people that will be affected by books differently that's why for example here with night house there's a lot of trigger warnings and a lot of people might not or like certain people might not be comfortable reading books with certain trigger warnings that comes with this book because they just don't feel comfortable reading it or other people might read it but be very negatively affected by it and books have that kind of power as well it's different for other for different people but sometimes just because you love a book doesn't mean that everybody needs to read it or you have to force people to read it or that you you want everybody to not be you know prohibited from reading it it's understandable why some books are prohibited but it's also understandable why some books shouldn't be prohibited so it's going through that whole process but her personal uh journey through that because she has a very strong very much ingrained love for books so highly highly suggest you read this as well uh if you have the same love for books as i do i feel like it didn't really change my love for books it's just that it kind of even made it more stronger because i've you know i'm aware that books are going to be like books affect other people differently just like how other like forms of media as well like movies and tv shows they're gonna be you know different for other people so for me that wasn't very uh new to me but it was very interesting reading it from her perspective because I can definitely tell just how much ingrained how ingrained it is to her your her love for books soon there's that okay the next one Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo this is highly hyped everywhere and I'm not really one to read verse like books uh, written in verse I think it's either my first or like one of the first few books that I've read that are written in verse so I was kind of hesitant to read this that's why I've had this for a while but I haven't really gone around to reading this up until this year I really enjoyed this I highly related to um, the main character that we're following Ziamaro as she writes about her experiences growing up and experiences as she goes through puberty and how the people around her has changed because of the changes in her body as well i highly relate to that because i'm when i started having puberty she's someone who also had puberty very early on i started having started my puberty at 11. i literally had my period a month before i turned 11. so my body started changing then and people around me were not changing and people were just still you know how they are and you know my body's like changing and people started looking at me differently and suddenly you're a lot more conscious about how people look at you and how people react to how you look and how you dress and i can definitely highly relate to that and also her relationship with her mother and her relationship with her mother's religion and the religion that she has growing up but also with boys and her father and men in general so i definitely highly recommend you read this book as well it's very fast to read because it's written in verse it might look pretty thick but it's still under 400 pages and Again, written verse, very quick to read. I actually listened to this in audiobook and also read it physically. So you can see it has a lot of awards, which I understand because just hearing her story, you understand like it's just it's not just about who she is growing up, but also what she looked like. So she learns about also poetry and slam poetry and she develops her love for this in for love her love for slam poetry and alongside you know the changing relationship that she has with her parents with her mom particularly and her twin and her friends and her body and the people around her so very highly recommend poetics by elizabeth acevedo very quick read you can read it in one sitting definitely put aside like three two hours you can finish that absolutely okay so the next one that i read is the yellow wallpaper by charlotte perkins gilman this is a short story slash essay i guess you could also call it i'm not really sure what they label it it's a fiction that is based on the author's personal experience we are following the main character who was prescribed a rest cure by her husband and also her physician and the rest cure is essentially you're isolated in this one room in a very isolated area as well you're not allowed to do anything uh you're not allowed to write you're not allowed to paint you just sitting there on the bed and doing nothing not even walking out the windows are barred and she has these yellow book she has this yellow wallpaper in her room that she starts obsessing about and we can see how much uh she changes and deteriorates as she spends more time in this room 
and we can see it through how she's changing her view of the yellow wallpaper just she, seeing things on the yellow wallpaper and seeing a woman is starting to come out of the yellow wallpaper etc it was very influential in changing the approach to mental illness and the different you know therapies that have been developed that are not actually helpful to people who are suffering from different mental illnesses and yeah it was very short to read at first i didn't really understand it or it was very short to the point that i was like wait i need more and so i had to like reread it and like listen to different interpretations of the story for me to fully um absorb it but i definitely highly recommend this one as well um also to watch you know certain videos maybe read some um breakdowns of the uh short story slash essay as well to fully understand what you know the author is trying to say uh with the short story so yeah highly recommend the yellow wallpaper all okay, right the next one is little women by lewis and me all cut i really like this book this was a classic i enjoyed this i read this pretty quickly as well i didn't realize how short it was until i actually finished reading it or actually was reading it it was a lot of fun to read it was a lot of joy to read the relationships between the sisters and the people around them and how they grow up and just it feels so heartwarming and cozy i don't read a lot of classics because growing up we don't really read a lot of classics in school the classics that we read are like filipino classics not really western classics so there's a lot of fun to read i really enjoyed this i haven't seen the movie like the new movie i don't know if i didn't even see the older one but i haven't seen any of the movies but i'm very much interested in seeing it i actually read this because i actually was compelled to read this because i wanted to see the movie i haven't actually seen it but definitely again highly recommend this book if you haven't read it it was a lot of fun very heartwarming and cozy it's about these sisters and their relationship with each other and obviously it's very realistic because the sisters don't have a 100 percent good relationship with each other especially in the beginning of the book um we have sisters that hate each other and his you know how sometimes if you have siblings you know you have a sibling that you like and a sibling that you don't like totally relate to that but again little women by louis and me all cut and the last one actually this is the book the last one and this is a book that i didn't actually rate five stars is into the magic shop by james r dotty i really enjoyed this book first half because that's when it was the most um informative and the most uh inspirational uh as the story goes it's it's a memoir of the author obviously james ardotti as uh he tells about the most important lesson that he learned in his life and it wasn't learned during his time as a doctor or learning to be learning to be a doctor it was i think he was 11 when he met or no 12 12 when he met ruth a woman who teaches him about um mindfulness and meditation and the art of manifestation so back then it wasn't a topic that a lot of people know about or a lot of people have been studying about it's a new thing but this woman teaches him how to do it and it changes a lot about his life and i really like the part where they he writes down like the instructions that he learned from ruth and i feel like uh the practices that ruth teaches him is something that we all need to practice in our own ways there's actually a website for um this one where you can have more resources and have more instructions and manuals on how you can do the practice that he learns here the only part that i didn't like was that after after the first part where he learns you know all these things that he applies throughout his life it kind of feels a little bit more fiction the second part than ever so this was written in a very in a fiction way like you know with like specific quotes or like lines like someone's telling you a story so it was this was very easy to read but again the, it's described as part memoir part science part inspiration part practical instruction i enjoyed the instruction part and the science part over the actual memoir part so yeah still something that i feel like a lot of people should read even just like the first part just so that you have an introduction on you know mindfulness and manifestation how it works and why it works and some science behind it as well so highly recommend this one as well just know that the memoir part can get a little more fictiony than i expected than you might expect but yeah those are all the books that i loved reading for 2020 i still have a few more that i do enjoy and i do really like reading i do really like reading 
but these are the books that I feel like I want to talk these are the books that I really want to talk about today but yeah that is it for this video I've been talking for 40 minutes now and I might use that but I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you on my next video